Namaste everyone and welcome. So here we are, uh, the second part of Anchor the Light on Wednesday. So before we start, let's ask for a blessing, shall we? To the Divine Supreme One, Divine Father, Mother, to all the spiritual teachers, spiritual elders, to all the saints of all traditions, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers, you can pray to whoever you like. Personally, to my teacher, Grand Master Tawakok Sui, Maha Gujimailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love, thank you for your guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. We thank you for this opportunity to learn, but most importantly, to serve. We thank you in full faith, and so it is. All right, so I hope you watch and listen to the lecture this morning, you know, before the meditation, the topic is service. And uh, I want to continue reading from my teacher's book called Created Transformation. And he said, service together with meditation is one of the fastest ways to achieve illumination. What is the purpose of having big chakras to do service? When you do service, it's like giving your chakras muscles. The greater your service, the greater your spiritual development. Okay, I'll, I'll go to in more detail. Right now, you are a small boat. <laughs> okay. One day, you're going to be a big carrier. You know, like a carrier where they carry planes and you know military stuff. A huge, gen ginormous uh, aircraft carrier. So it means that you have to do s more service. It doesn't make sense to have a big boat and nothing inside. It doesn't make sense to have... Super big chakras, so much energy, and there's hardly any output. There has to be output. Small chakras carry a small load. Big chakras are like big cargo ship. They carry big responsibilities. A big ship is meant to carry a lot of cargo. To develop big chakras without doing service of no use. Use your big chakras to do something productive. This is service. Here's the key point. Service is a manifestation of your spiritual growth. Let's do this again. Service is a manifestation of what? Your spiritual growth. When you do service, your energy level increases. You become a channel. The more you do service, the more you become empowered. All right, let's stop there. You know, many years ago, I remember I was walking with my teacher. And like all of you, he said, oh, I want deeper teachings, more advanced techniques, awaken the kundalini, activate the chakras, make my aura kajilin miles long, whatever, you know, I'm, I didn't say those things, but you get the point, right? I said, Master, could you teach me the more advanced technique, how to do this, how to do that, how to develop the golden aura, the this crystal body, and this and this. I was asking all these higher teachings, right? And then he looked at me, he goes, how many students have you taught? How many souls have you enlightened? I said, Master, you know, I'm doing my thing. I, I, I teach X amount of people, I, you know, I give them a number. He looked at me and goes, does it make sense to have a big ship carry one sack of rice? I said, no, no, master, it doesn't make sense. If you're just going to carry one small bag of rice, then a small boat will do it. Then he looked at me and goes, exactly. Your results are reflections of your spiritual development. That's that. <laughs> and then he walks away. I'm going, ah! <laughs> and then later on in the class, he was saying, what's the use of having big chakras if it's not serving anybody? I know those sounds like painful words, like, yeah, well, because I want to be get enlightened. And the purpose is, so it's brighter. No, I'm kidding. It's like, and? So enlightened, what does that mean? Well, we talk about this more, and being enlightened means you get to experience your true nature, a being of light. Okay, let's go with that. A being of light, I'm experiencing illumination, which is connected to light. So you realize that you're a being of light, you expand, you expand it beyond the physical body, and then what? What are you going to do? Raise your hand like Iron Man and shine light on someone? <laughs> and keep going. What do you do with it? Well, so I'll have more inner peace. Uh-huh, and? You have inner peace. Okay, at least you're not contributing to psychic pollution in the world. Okay, that's good. And that's it? Well, so I can, um, I'll have more wisdom. I have more energy. Mm -hmm. To do what? So I'll be healthier. I can be, so far everything's uh, just for your benefit. Okay, let's go with that. And uh, so I can help more people. Now we're getting somewhere. And we have more energy. I can help more people. Uh-huh. 
And, and you have lots and lots of energy, big orange, big chakras, what can you do? Oh, I can serve more people, I can heal more people, I can give more money to charity, and this and... Exactly the point, what took you so long? You see, that's exactly the point. Without knowing the objective, people are focused right here. So, the fastest way to spiritual development is very, very simple. It's like breathing. You've been to UPW with me, with Tony Robbins, that's the last thing I tell people. I said, look... Spiritual development, spiritual practice is like breathing. You inhale, you exhale. You cannot keep inhaling forever and just think about yourself all day long. Oh, I want to have bigger chakras. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. At some point, you're going to get bored and you'll quit. Because it's input, no output. So service is output. And believe it or not, some people complain, oh, there's a whole bunch of rubbish. I don't believe in that stuff. Uh, first of all, who cares what you believe? I don't believe in exhaling. Uh, you die. Uh, <laughs> you know, sometimes you wonder, people are so much into themselves, they don't realize we are part of a bigger whole. Right? And that's why you notice, the more people spiritually develop, the more harmless they become. The more compassionate they become. Because it's not just about me and my needs. So the more you meditate, the more you realize, I'm not this body, I'm not this mind, I'm, this thought, I'm not these thoughts, I'm a being of light. I'm a spiritual being having a physical experience. So is that dude, so is that guy, so is that woman, everybody is. Hmm, somehow, the more I do my meditation, I feel a connection. And somehow, the more you do your meditation, the more you realize it's harder to be idle when somebody's suffering. You know why? As I always say, keep that pain. You know why? You're experiencing that pain because you're sensing that as they suffer, somehow you suffer. Because we're connected. You cannot say on one end, we're one, and somebody's suffering and don't lift a finger. You cannot say, we are all one, there's only one, and you beat up every person you meet. That doesn't make sense. Oneness means if your right arm hurts, even though your left arm is not hurting, in the end it affects your entire body. Isn't it? So, service is very, very important because service is a manifestation. Listen, service is a manifestation of the realization that we're all interconnected. And at some point, I came to that realization. Took a while. I was a dense one. <laughs> some of you going, yeah, I know you're still dense. So thank you very much. <laughs> Somehow I came to that realization because what I did is, when my teacher would teach me a technique of meditation, I'm on the other end. Of, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. I over practice everything. When he told me to practice once a week, I did it every single day. Yeah, I know it's crazy. When it comes to constancy, aim, and effort, oh, that was not the virtue that I lacked. I overdid everything. You know, I have a rule in life: if you can't overdo it, don't do it. <laughs> I need no moderation. The problem was I was not doing enough service. I was meditating, with generating lots of energy. And not releasing it. So that's when he told me, you have to focus more on doing service. And at some point, when some realization came in, took a while, I started noticing, yeah, what am I doing this meditation for? I have all these big energy chakras, and what am I going to do? Pray it all over, go, look at my chakras, it's big. When that clicked, I go, oh, I started to do more healing. I started noticing more people come to classes. I started teaching more. And I, and I noticed, hey, this feels better. Because now it's like, <sighs> there's an exhalation. Make sense? Now, another thing that uh, I want to share with you, then we'll meditate, is something like this. Meditation and service changes the particles of your energy body. I know, this is a little weird. Just listen carefully. When you do generate energy through meditation, spiritual practice, you have new energy coming in. Higher frequency, right? That's why you're more peaceful because all the emotional crap and stress, and it's out. So you have higher frequency. That's great. But if you don't do service, just so much can come in. The act of service and doing something, helping someone, giving money to charity, that's an output. That allows that energy to flow out of you, creating space for even higher frequency to come in. 
that's why some people don't don't really progress so much because true they meditate they watch their diet they do everything that's me 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 i i i but nobody else is being served so at some point the energy becomes stagnated is that right english or stagnant the energy becomes stagnant it's the same energy that's why you notice uh, sometimes i see people in class i've seen them today oh great he meditates he's a new nice guy so on so on so on 10 years down the line i see them in class not much change I mean, in fact, I'll share a story with you many year, that happened many years ago. There's this guy who came in. Uh, he starts name dropping. I've been to India. I've been to this guru, that guru, and every other guru you can think of. Most of them I've never heard of. So I go, oh, wow, this guy is <laughs> amazing. And he wear all these nice necklaces and, you know, like spiritual paraphernalia type that looks like you're, you've been to every cave and every ashram in India. I go, wow, okay, have a seat, please. Thank you, thank you. I'm honored to have you in class. So he learned pranic healing, did everything, wonderful, great. I scan him, you know, part of the class, you scan each other. Say, oh, this guy's big chakras, bigger than everybody in the class. Amazing. And so I'm not sure if it's that class or another class. There's this guy who came in. He just wanted to, he just took pranic healing because he wanted to heal his mom or, you know, it's not something like great old plan. He doesn't know what the heck a chakra is. He was like newbie. <laughs> okay. Anyway, make a long story short. I scan him, sure enough, compared to this dude and everybody else's chakras are tiny because he hasn't done much. He just came in, just wanted to help his mom or somebody in his family that's sick. Mm -hmm. And of course, every time we have class, we tell them, okay, you learn these things, you know, come to the free healing clinics. I know, you guys are, what are you talking about? When, pre-COVID times, every time you come to a private healing class, in addition to learning the technique, we want to make sure there's a place for you to practice. If, let's say, you don't have anybody to practice it at home or at work, we have free healing clinics that you can volunteer, that people, we accept people from the streets that come in, they need back, they have healing for back pain, emotional stuff, whatever. So you get to practice with real people rather than I'm practicing with my friend. You know what I mean? So it's, it's like a practicum, right? So we encourage them to do that. Here's the interesting part. Maybe a year later, I see both of them in one of the higher classes with my teacher. And I go, something's different. So I scan this guy who's, you know, knows every guru and wears everything and the kajillion crystals on his body. He looks like a spiritual Mr. T. <laughs> scan him. Okay, good energy. Same as what it was a year ago. This kid that I met in one class in about the sa that same time frame who just wanted to heal his mother has been showing up for the healing clinics, have been doing service, giving money to charity, or doing part of the heal, the feeding program, which every primary healing location that you join in your area has a feeding program, okay? Feeding hungry people. He's been to all of those. So in addition to working on his mom, he shows up to the free healing clinics to, to do service, to the feeding program, and so on and so on. You know the interesting part? In one year's time, I scanned his aura and his chakras, his energy was bigger than the guy who knows every guru in the world. This, or, this kid's aura and chakras are bigger, cleaner, more dynamic than that guy who has been on the spiritual path at least 20 years earlier than him. What's the difference? This guy was resting on his glory. <laughs> glory days. Don't believe in meditation. He says, oh, I do my thing. All right. Does he do service? No, I have my own thing. Okay, you have your own thing. This kid, no ego. He says... I come to heal my mom, uh, but you say that it's good to do service. So he shows up at the clinics. He goes, he does it out of, like, to be recognized. He does it because it's the right thing to do. In less than one year, this kid outpaced that guy because he does his practice and he serves. Which one are you? Yeah, but I've read this book. I've read that book. I've joined this, month, this ashram. I've joined this and that. Great. What do you have to show for it? I know it's it's a harsh question. Results count. Intention is great and wonderful. I really want to develop, but results count. How many people have you served? And I'll go back to the spiritual landmark talk we had many years ago. We were in a room with my teacher. <clears throat> it's mostly panic killing instructors, right? We were in his in hotel room. We're just sitting down and he's giving us a, a short talk. And he says, All of you have to leave a spiritual landmark. And we were listening, Spiritual landmark? 
He goes, you know, you know, there's a landmark. You go to a certain place. They have a statue of this. They have a a place that says that commemorates that this in this place that how many people were saved from blah 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 whatever. He said, you have to leave a spiritual landmark. In other words, you have to make this incarnation count. When you leave your body, what has the soul accomplished in that lifetime? How many souls have you touched? How many souls have you led into the light? How many souls have you nurtured and helped them to reach enlightenment faster? Along those lines. And we were all quiet. We are going... Wow, I thought it's just like, you know, well, my intention is to help people. And then he said, results count. Results count. It's just like, you cannot be a firefighter. Oh yeah, my intention is to fight fires. And you sit in the station all day long while there's a fire going on. Think about it. Okay? So, the beautiful thing about this, and I'll end this with this, we'll do our med- then we'll do our meditation. It's as simple as this. <clears throat> To reach your objective of enlightenment, illumination, oneness with God, there are many pathways, different religions, different practices, right? We honor all of them because all of them lead to the mountain, top of the mountain. The shortcut, regardless of your religion, your belief system, whatever, is as simple as inhaling and exhaling. You do your practice religiously, diligently, consistently, and you serve consistently. So there's a constant input, output, input, output, input, output. In the process, as that energy comes in and goes out, it goes out through you, not from you. Big difference. Through you, as that energy keeps going through, you're a channel. As more of that energy flows through us, our channel gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So that's why we do our meditation here. We do our meditation. We bless the earth. The energy is flowing through. That's one type of service. And then afterwards, you go out, give money to charity. You volunteer in places that's needed. You serve people that are needed. And another thing that people ask earlier, how about, you just don't talk about people. How about animals? That's why my answer was all. We don't say, may just the people I love be blessed. May all be blessed. May all beings be blessed. Remember? So I remember my teacher said, Compassion to humans have to be extended to compassion to animals. And for some of you who have studied a lot, you know what I'm talking about because um, when you're meditating, your cat comes over and sits next to you. When you're meditating, your dog likes to sit next to you. <laughs> Anybody been there? I even have uh, one of our students when, when, it's medi- when they're meditating <clears throat> and somehow they hear it on the stream or they're playing my teacher's CD or the messages chanting, oh, the dog will go, oh. Advanced soul. Okay? So I hope, let's put that to rest. Compassion for all. That's that. Alright? So, inhale, exhale. Let me just add one more thing to that. Some of you are saying, yeah, but I do a lot of service. Good. Are you also taking time to meditate? Do your spiritual practice? If not, then you're just exhaling, you're not inhaling. It has to be both. Taking care of your body Taking care of the vessel, the temple, is just as important because when the temple breaks down, the Holy Spirit has nowhere to live. <laughs> Make sense? It has to be both. You take care of yourself, take care of your body, take care of the vessel, take care of the temple. Do your meditation. Eat right. Get plenty of rest. For some of you who are still stuck with the idea, well, oh, but I'm so advanced I don't need sleep. Um, you guys have heard my, <laughs> my opinion of that. This is pure nonsense. Because the only way that you don't need sleep is when you reach a certain level of continuous consciousness. That means when your body is awake or your body is asleep, the soul coming comes through with no difference. Like you're just as awake spiritually when your body sleep or awake. So if you're not there yet, your body needs sleep. Okay? Anyway, let's talk one at a time. So take care of your body. Do hygiene good practices, and so on, so on, right? And do your spiritual practice, that's inhaling. Do service, give money to charity, help people, and so on, so on, so on. That's exhaling. It has to be both. Now, um, I told you earlier that we'll give you links to places you can donate for India. I know, I know, you guys say, yeah, but how about Lebanon? How about Venezuela? How about this? Okay, look, it's as simple as this. 
you have a street and everybody needs help because somebody's going through, you know, they don't have water, this, they don't have this, but one of them is on fire, <laughs> burning. Uh, I think it might be a good idea to save those lives. <laughs> it doesn't mean the rest are less important, but we have to focus on that right now because that's the immediate need. Okay? You don't agree with it? Well, whatever. So, here's the point. Just go to masterco.org. We prepared all the links for you. And it's not one of those affiliate links like, I get a commission. Okay? So don't even let that cross your head. We're just doing it because for me to list everything here, you guys are going to go, what? Da, da, da. Just go to masterco.org. I asked my assistant to just slap it on there on the front so you don't have to look for it. And you just choose whichever charity you want. If it's none of you want, go find one. Just do something. Don't sit there and go, yeah, but I think this is that. Okay? That's that. That's the direct answer. I can make it. Shall we meditate? <clears throat> So what we'll do, we'll do the great invocation. We'll let the energy flow through us. We'll bless the earth. First, we'll focus on India because they really need it. Again, I just talked to someone um, and it, it's heartbreaking. You know, they some are waiting 24 hours with dead relative's body in front of them, waiting in line to be processed at the crematorium. It's like unthinkable. And that's why when people say, oh, I don't know, it's all a hoax, people are making it up. We'll fly you there, let you parachute down to the crematorium, and then you tell me if you can still say that. And it's easy to be indifferent to people suffering until it hits you. So let's do our share, you know, I'd simultaneously praying and meditating, giving money to charity. In fact, this friend of mine, uh, they initiated one called Oxygen India, where they actually, they already sent a plane over. He and his, his friends... They're pretty well off. They gathered all the oxygen, oxygen concentrators, and then sent the plane over. And so they're going to be sending another plane. And if you want to contribute, that's all there. Okay? And just, just don't sit and do nothing. I implore you. Let's meditate. To the Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother, we thank you for your blessings. To my teacher, Master Tokosui Mahagu Jamelin, and all the high beings, all the spiritual teachers, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be of service. We thank you in full faith. So be it. Okay, put your hand like this. <clears throat> Just gently tap your crown. I am that. I am. I'm not the body, I'm not the emotion, not the thoughts, I am the soul. I am a spiritual being of divine intelligence, divine love, and divine power. I am that, the soul, the spiritual self. I am connected in one to my higher soul. I am connected in one to the divine spirit, the divine spark within me. I am a child of God, meaning we're all learning and growing. I am one with God, I am one with all. There's only oneness. We are one. Realize it within you that we are all one. We are all connected. We are our brother and sister's keeper. We are one. Open your hands in blessing. <clears throat> Visualize the earth in front of you. We will chant Om three times. Om 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 From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being in India. Let light descend throughout the whole country of India now. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being in India. Let love, compassion, mercy descend throughout the whole of India now.
from the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and the spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let good will and the willingness to do good descend throughout the whole of India. Now, so be it. Be still, let the blessings of will, love, and intelligence bless every person, every being in India, alleviate the suffering of everyone now. From the center which we call the Indian people, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where any evil, any corruption May it seal it over any of these. Now, so be it. May it seal the door where any of these evil dwells. So it is. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the whole of India. Let light, love, and power restore the divine plan, the blessings to the whole of India. Now, so be it. Just be still. We are one. Let the blessings flow through us. Just aim that light throughout the whole of India. Alleviate the suffering. Heal all the people affected by COVID, directly or indirectly. May all the souls who have left their bodies find the light quickly and effortlessly. May all the families that are suffering because of a loved one is sick or someone has left their body, may they be comforted of their pain, their sorrow, and their suffering. So be it. If you know someone personally in India that have lost someone or going through difficult times, flood them with golden light. May all of them be blessed, without exception. Just be still. May all of them be blessed unconditionally. May the leaders be blessed with wisdom with intelligence, with compassion for the people, so be it. May all the caregivers in India be empowered, be healed, be divinely protected, so be it. Some of them working 24 hours for weeks. May they be blessed, may they be empowered, and may they be healed. We humbly ask that healing angels be with all of them, to work through them, be with them. And as they serve, may their families be blessed and divinely protected. So be it. So be it. So be it. So be it. Keep projecting the golden light. Now let that light spread past India to the surrounding areas. Let it spread throughout the entire earth. For the second and the third recitation of the great invocation, we will bless the entire earth. You're welcome to focus on whatever country you feel or what you know that needs help. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being, and the entire earth. Let light descend throughout the entire earth. Divine intelligence, wisdom, understanding, discernment. Let it spread to the entire earth and to whatever country you feel or what you know is needed. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth. We are one. Project that love to whatever place, whatever country that needs divine healing, mercy, compassion for all. Just be still. May all these places, may the entire earth be divinely blessed. So be it. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and the spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let good will and the willingness to do good 
descend throughout the entire earth in whatever area you want to bless. Bless people with the will to do good, not just sitting there and, you know, intending and wanting to help, actually taking massive action to serve others. There's so many people who need help. There's so many people who are capable. They just need the will to do good. So be it. From the center which you call the human race and all the different races, let the plan of love and light work out and may permanently seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, love, and power descend throughout the entire earth in the area you want. Let light, love, and power descend and restore the divine plan on earth in the places that you're praying for. So be it. Be still, just focus that divine light to those areas. So be it. Now, to intensify the energy, just imagine a beautiful point of light, a brilliant point of light above your crown. Put your entire attention there. The rest will be done for you. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of every person, every being, in every dimension. Let light descend throughout the entire earth. Be still. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of every person, every being. Let love descend throughout the entire earth. May God's messenger of love descend on earth now. From the center where the will of God is known, let divine purpose guide the wills of every person, every being, the purpose which the holy masters and the spiritual hierarchy know and serve. Let good will and the willingness to do good descend throughout the entire earth. Now, just be still. Just put your entire awareness in that point of light above your crown. The rest is being done through you and for you. From the center, which we call the human race and all the races, let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where any evil dwells. Let light, let love, let power descend throughout the entire earth in all dimensions. Let light, let love, let power restore and manifest the divine plan on earth now. So be it. Be still and let it just flood the earth with divine light, divine love and divine power now. Let's chant Om three times. Om. 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 on your lap just be still 
Maintain your stillness and awareness on that beautiful point of light floating above your head. Just stay there. Om. Ahum. Just be still. Gently, very slowly, very gently and slowly come back to your body. Gently move your fingers and your toes, very gently and slowly come back. Take your time. Alright, when you're ready, you can open your eyes. Okay, hope you have uh, had a good meditation. If you're sensitive, you, have felt, you might have felt when you were blessing India, you might have felt like something being pulled out of your hand, like energy being sucked out of your hand. And some of you are sensitive, probably felt your hand itching or hurting. Yeah, so you have some idea what they're going through. So, yeah, if I was talking a little too strongly earlier, it's because... Uh, we know a lot of you are from India. You know, we have many friends, we have family members that uh, are from India, and they're going through a lot of suffering. And we just 
want to be there for them and do what you can. I mean, you know, we don't expect you to fly over there. Uh, but just go to the website, massacre.org. We made it easy. You just go over there. There's a list of different organizations that we vetted the best we can that are actually helping directly, getting past the red tape because, you know, what can you do? Third world countries, there's red tape, right? There's corruption, there's this and that. So we did our best to find places that you can cut through it and the help will go to the people. If you want to. If you don't want to, well, it's your karma. No, I'm kidding. So do whatever the heck you like. Let's just do our share, okay? I I implore you, don't just sit there and do nothing. You know, but I'm praying for them. That's good. But get off your basic chakra and do something. All right? That is that. Namaste, everyone. We will see you Friday morning, uh, 10 and 6. And, you know, Friday is emotional healing and prosperity healing. So what we'll do on Friday, the morning one will be prosperity healing. The evening one will be emotional healing. And we're doing this for the ones who are joining us because we want to make sure that, um, you know, as you do your meditation, spiritual practice, emotional crap comes up to the surface. You know, you guys know that. So that's why we, uh, 